my name is Rob and I am a student, a web designer and a programmer. I run a few businesses, obviously Static Games. Uh, we make games, we've won more than our fair share of awards and plaudits over the past couple of years. Um, also White Pug, we are a digital engineering firm. Uh, we work with some really big people who unfortunately will not let me talk to you about them because they're all under NDA. Um, we briefly had a foot in online gambling, which we stepped out of because we didn't like the ethics behind it. And we're just starting up basically a e-commerce shop. We sell music, sound effects, textures, models, things like that to the games industries, uh, film, VFX, things like that. So that is basically my background. But moving swiftly on. So business. I will bet that you cannot do it on your own. Um, when I started up, uh, I quickly realized I did not have all of the skills that I required. So running a business is a full-time job. Marketing is a full-time job. Being a student is also a full-time job. You have been warned. Um, basically, these guys that you see on the screen are my crew. They are the guys that basically look after me. Um, I suppose the best way of putting it is when you start up a company, you need to know what skills you have and what skills you don't have. Uh, if you're not good at marketing, go out and find someone who can market for you. Uh, you're not expected to have an entire skill set and you're not going to. You're also not going to have the time to run the whole lot on your own, so you are going to need somebody around you. Um, so yeah, basically with that said, out of interest, how many people in this room want to be an MD? Who wants to run the company? Oh, thank God someone put their hands up. <laughs> that could have been the most awkward moment of my life. Okay, well, just for the record, uh, I started up Static Games and White Pug fully with the intention of making games, of building websites, things like that. And it's not a part of my day job anymore. Uh, I really wish it was, that's why I started it. But I had to step aside and basically I run the company I don't really develop the products anymore, which sucks a little bit, but I am in fact a boring, number crunching kind of guy, so so be it, I don't mind running the company. Um, but yeah, if you want to be pushing the idea, you probably won't be pushing the company, um, so do keep that in mind. Okay, don't be over ambitious. Um, just to separate, you are going to need long-term goals. You need to know what direction your company is going for. But I have seen so many people, I have worked with so many SMEs who start up and think they're IKEA or think they're Sony or some other multinational company. And it's just silly. Basically, you want to be working within a scope. So you have limited resources. You have limited time scales. Please, 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 God's sake. Do not think that you're going to start up and you're going to build the next... 3D virtual reality headset, God knows what, and compete against Sony because you're not. You're just not. So work within your time scales, work within your budget. So if I want to get published by Microsoft, my first goal should not be right. I start up, I run off and knock on their door. The first thing I need to be doing is taking baby steps and learning to walk before I can run. So I need to make sure I've got the foundations of my software built. I need to be going out, bug testing it, I need to find play testers, and then I start to look at the longer term ambitions. But <coughs> work within your scope, otherwise you're going to be one of these people that starts up, tries to run, falls over, and never releases anything. Please do not be that person. Okay, just to uh, basically contradict my first slide, you are going to need people who have I suppose a skill set that complements yours. But you do need, you do need to start off small. Please, please, please. Um, basically, to cut a long story short, the more people you have, the more cash you need to make to survive. Now, one thing I really wish I hadn't done, and Ryan, I think you're awesome, but I wish I hadn't taken on all of the people I did when we started up the company. Um, <laughs> oh, no. You're welcome, buddy. Um, yeah, basically, if you start off, you release your first product, you make, I don't know, 40 grand. If there's two of us working on it, great. Taking home a decent punk, uh, chunk of pocket change. If we've got seven of us, 
we're probably not surviving that. Um, basically, if someone can go, if you can cut them out of your business, do. So this is probably another good reason not to work with your friends. You are going to want to cut people out. We did. We were working with our friends at the time. We're not too close anymore. Uh, you've been pre-warned. Okay, so marketing. Um, we're terrible at this. You probably never heard of me. You probably never heard of my company. Um, and we're still absolutely terrible at marketing. Nothing has changed. Um, but this is your one opportunity, your one single opportunity to boost your sales, to increase your cash flow, to actually increase your chances of survival. Um, so whatever you do, do not squander it. You could make the most amazing game about flying unicorns that joust and fly through space, flying over galaxies and fart rainbows. But unless you tell me that this game exists, I'm not going to buy it. I won't know what it is. I won't know where to find it. For God's sake, mark it. Because this is literally the death of about five companies I've worked with now. They've made some really, really cool stuff and they just don't tell anyone that they exist. And they've all fallen over and just collapsed. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything to market. I'm, well, most of you in here are students. I'm not going to tell you how to use Facebook or Twitter or YouTube because you'll do it every day. Uh, but make sure you go on there, set your business up online, make sure you're releasing content on there. Uh, you need to go viral, not in an Ebola or virus on your computer kind of way. But basically, the only way to do viral marketing these days is Facebook. Um, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, these things are all massively, massively vital. If you don't do them, you're doing it wrong. Um, website. I'm assuming most of you probably have a website as well. Uh, if you don't, you need to get looking at things like Wix, WordPress, they're free. You need to be setting up on that ASAP. Uh, people don't walk down the high street and look for products and goods anymore. They Google them. And they don't just use their laptop, they use their phone. So make sure you're mobile responsive. Make sure that people can find you whatever device they're looking at you on. Um, also, Press, media outlets, uh, don't be embarrassed to talk to them. So many people are, and it's just silly. Uh, at the end of the day, they need to write about something to make money, and it might as well be you. So get yourself a press kit, start sending it out to people. At the end of the day, you're doing part of their job for them. You're finding them a story, a hook, you're giving them images, you're giving them something to write about. That's what they need. You make life easier for them, they'll like you. Makes a great relationship. Um, you get free marketing, they get their job done. Now, do not, do not be modest, okay? Here is a big issue that many, many indie games companies have, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and assume it applies to everyone. Uh, you're gonna come up with an idea and you're gonna think this is the greatest thing in the world and that people are just gonna lose their shit over it and they're gonna buy it in their droves. And you're not gonna wanna tell anyone about it because you think someone's gonna steal this idea. Um, let's use my company for an example here then. We're not the first people to make games, we're not the first people to make games on mobile or PC or tablet, we're not the first people to release a farm simulator, we're not the first people to do any of that. When we started up White Pug, our USP was we were probably the cheapest on the market. That isn't original. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of businesses out there and there are millions and millions of people, billions with ideas. Yours probably isn't that original. Uh, you can try and protect it if you want, but you're just stopping yourself marketing and that shooting yourself in the foot. So just do not do that. Please, please, pretty please. Um, what you stand to gain from trying to protect your idea, you're just gonna lose because you're not marketing the product. Go ahead, trademark it, patent it, uh, do all these things if you want. But if you don't have the cash, don't think that's the reason not to tell people that you exist, because it just isn't. Okay, bootstrapping. If you don't know what bootstrapping is, it's also called zero budgeting. It's the idea of starting up your company with no money, which is what I did, because I am a penniless student. Um, I've never had any money when I've started up any of my companies. Um, and basically that's fine. 
I can market without it. When I started up Static Games, we had laptops, we could code for free, and we had healthy enthusiasm. We wanted to make some cash. Um, okay, great, the business wasn't sucking any money out, but I still had bills, I still had rent, still had to eat, still had to put petrol in my car. Um, bottom line, a lot of people think that zero money going out from the business means that you can survive. It doesn't. You need money coming in. So if you don't have money to live off of yet, maybe think twice about starting up your business. Um, not to be a pessimist, but if you don't have a loan, if you don't have cash savings, it's not going to end well for you. Uh, with that said, just throwing this out there, not to put ideas in your head, but while you're a student and you've got someone paying you to live, student loan, well hey, now is probably a good time to give it a shot. Um, you got, what, a four year window of opportunity? You'll never ever get that again. No one is going to pay you to live after you leave uni. So if you want to try it out, try it out now. It's a lot of work, but it's the one opportunity you've got to try it on somebody else's budget, basically. Okay. Can you afford your own IP? Uh, we couldn't when we started. WhitePug basically exists because we could not afford to create our game at the time. And like I said, we were zero budgeting. We still have money going out. We were trying to create a product. We've got no money in the kitty. So what did we do? Um, we decided, right, we need to start looking at service businesses. Um, I know some of you are probably thinking service business is the way forward. And to be honest, at this point, I'd probably say you're right. As a student, it's a lot easier to start up a service business, and that's the way I would probably go. You don't need any money to buy stock or manufacturing. Um, you're basically selling your time. Uh, there's going to be a lot of you in the audience who are thinking, oh, but I want to sell shoes or tables or whatever you want. Great. Please go ahead and do that. Um, you're going to need more money. And you're probably thinking, well, why would I do that then if I can just go out and start a service company? Uh, the upside on products is a lot, lot better in my opinion. Um, I suppose the way I would put it is like this. If I'm selling you my time, I've got a limited number of hours in the day. I can only sell you X amount of hours. And anything over that, I just can't offer you. I can't increase the amount of time I have. If I'm selling a product, I can always make more of that. I can always manufacture another product. I can always sell it to you. Not only that, but it's a lot more scalable. I can make a product, I can move on and make another one. Um, but yeah, while you're in uni, contracts are more certain money. There's no guarantee that you start a product, um, start selling that, that you're even going to make your cash back. So mitigating risk. I think while you're still here, service companies are the way forward. And uh, it's probably not the best thing to say, especially on camera. Uh, sorry to any of our clients watching. There's something to be said for honing your skills on the budget of others. So, Before you go out and make your product, why not uh, spend a bit of time increasing your skill set on theirs? Sorry again. Okay, so contacts equals contracts. Um, talk to everybody, 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 everybody. Uh, service, for, well, yeah, service businesses basically live and die on the contracts uh, that they have. And the only way to get them is to meet people. I used to hate networking. Hate, hate, hate it. I'd show up at an event and stand in a corner with a beer and basically hope that at some point someone would wander over and say hello to me. Um, don't do that. Go out, force yourself to talk to people. Go link to people on LinkedIn. Uh, absolutely anyone you can. Email the people that you want to meet. You'll find that they're all really, really super duper duper friendly. Um, there's always a way that they're happy to talk to you, by, whether that's phone, whether that's meeting them for a coffee. Um, basically, when I first got a few contracts, I must have gone out for 50, 60 coffees in the space of about two or three weeks. And uh, it took a lot of effort. I hated every moment of it because I'm a programmer and I hate meeting people. Well, not anymore. I did. Um, but yeah, basically, net result from that, 50, 60 coffees, I got a couple of nice contracts and a severe addiction to caffeine, God bless it. Um, yeah, basically that allowed me to get my foot in the door. Um, talk to everyone, 
Make sure you meet people. Uh, if you don't meet people, you're not going to find work. People work with people they like. That is a fact of life. If people don't like you, they're not going to hire you. It doesn't matter how good you are. Um, so definitely go out, go meet people, and go make some friends. Um, yeah, always, always, always ask for the sale as well. So many people meet people, um, and they'll know that they're looking for a website, or they'll know that they're looking for an app, or they'll know they want something, and that they can provide it. And they're not confident enough to bring it up. But definitely, definitely do, or you're going to suffer. Um, if you don't ask for the sale, you just won't get it. I don't know how else to put that. Um, but yeah, um, I basically started off like that. I had a guy called Mike Hawkyard. I went and asked him for a load of contracts. He didn't have any that he could offer me. But not two days passed, and I got all of the contracts that weren't big enough for his company. And they basically all rolled down to mine. So, viva Mike Hawkyard. Okay. Um, as you probably read on the Eventbrite page or on the Facebook, I hate equity funding. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate loans. I don't want to be in debt. I don't want to accumulate more debt with interest rates. And I also don't want to give up any part of my company. Um, yeah, I never have, probably never will. Um, so how do I look at getting cash? Uh, these are all methods that have worked for me. Grants, how many of you ever go out and speak to Paulborough Council, Bournemouth Borough Council, how many of you look at charities like the Wellcome Trust, um, groups like Creative England, Nesta, these are all great sources of money. They offer a lot of grants, uh, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. So definitely start looking at these people because they're going to fund you, they're not going to take equity off you, and they're not going to put you in debt. Um, competitions, we've one cash, hardware, software, God knows what else of competitions. It's also a great way to get your name out there. It's also what made me start up the business. Uh, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And basically Ryan dragged me into a competition and we got really far into it. And I thought, great, I'm gonna make this a business. And then I dragged everybody in to work for me. So they didn't get a choice either. It was great, they were forced <laughs> to work. Um, yeah, contacts, by that I don't mean VCs. I mean, go bug your nan. No one believes in you like your nan does, and she's going to give you money. Um, it's just a fact of life. She's got it there. You're probably going to get it. Uh, match funding, great if you've already got a bit of money. We've done this. Basically, it's people will give you, this particular Nestor and Creative England are big on this. If you've got two grand, they'll give you an extra four, provided that you can prove that you're going to meet their criteria, which normally isn't too bad to be honest. Um, yeah, crowdfunding, I haven't done this, some of my best friends have, it's a lot of work. I'm sure many of you have looked at Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Don't just ask for the amount that you think you need, ask for more. Ask for contingency and then remember that you've got to pay tax, everybody forgets that. Everybody forgets that Kickstarter take a cut. Everybody forgets that they've got to pay for their rewards. Everybody forgets that they've got to pay for post and packing on those rewards. So calculate what you need, then add on to it, then add on to it, then add on to it a little bit more, and then you've probably got the amount you actually need to ask for. Um, and yeah, last one, Creative England, definitely go to them. They offer a lot of 0% interest loans. Um, basically, they'll give you 20, 25 grand you don't have to pay it back until you're earning over a certain amount. It's basically a student loan with no interest. You can start up your business on them. And you only pay back the money that you took. Um, yeah, basically those are the ways I would go. Those are the ways that I'm aware of. So Perseverance creates success. And now we have a Borat. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> My great slide designer. Um, yeah, basically the difference between success and failure is the effort you put in. Do not get disheartened by negative feedback. Negative feedback is brilliant. I love it when people criticise me. Not in a you are fat, I hate you kind of way, but when they look at my business or my product, they go, I hate that, I hate that, I hate that. It's so much better than someone patting you on the back and going, yeah, you've done really well, that's super duper awesome, well done Rob, you've done a great job. I can't work with that. If you look at something I've made and go, I hate the colour, I hate that it does this, should be doing this, 
why can't you add this functionality to it? Brilliant. Tell me what you hate. Tell me what you hate because criticism is the key to improvement. If you don't have people criticizing you, if you have a bunch of yes men or if you're only ever showing your product to your mum and your friends, you're not going to make a very good product. Um, go show it off to the people that hate you. Go show it off to people that do this for a living. Um, basically, take that feedback and work on it and don't get disheartened by it. Um, in addition to this, uh, perseverance creates success. Don't be afraid to fail. <laughs> Failing is great. Fail as quickly as you can, as often as you can, and do it while you're still a small company. Do it while you're an SME, not after you've grown. Uh, anything you fail on now is going to save you a lot of money because you are going to do it at some point. And if you do it down the line, it's going to cost you a lot of money. And I do mean a lot of money. Uh, Ollie Bachelor, mate that I work with, uh, he always loves to compare this to Tinder. As he puts it, it's great when you fail quickly, it's great when you fail cheaply over a single coffee, and it's great when you move on really quickly. Don't get disheartened, just move on to the next person. The more you fail, the quicker you find the person you actually like. So, thank you for that analogy, Ollie. Um, so, yeah, I suppose the last thing, uh, you don't know everything, and you never will. And the great thing about that is, neither does anybody else. Go ahead and find yourself a mentor, but industries move on. Technology changes, methods change, and nobody ever knows everything. Uh, I was sat down in a boardroom about a year ago, and one of my quote-unquote business friends, who was a significantly higher power than me in the industry, decided to tell me that the way forward is play the student card. Go walk into this boardroom, they like helping smaller businesses, they like helping young startups. Go play this student card. And I walked in there, and I did. And they turned around and, I fucking love Guns and Roses, sorry. Uh, I turned around and played the student card, and basically what happened was they told me to get out. Until I was a professional, do not enter their boardroom again. So I'm not saying that uh, you shouldn't listen to people. I'm saying make your own mind up. Um, basically that cost us a lot of money because we thought just because he's bigger than us, you know, he's better than us. It's just not true. Do your company your way. You've got to enjoy it. You've got to have fun. Um, if you've got Big Bob's buildings down the road, turning your construction company into a replica of Big Bob's buildings, he's probably going to take your trade anyway. So. Do it your way, have fun, and make sure you make your own decisions. Um, it's the only way forward. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how much that helped you, but now that you know what I wanted you to know, and I also want you to know that we have these social media links, <laughs> um, yeah, what would you like me to have liked you to know? Yeah, questions. Yeah, sure. Uh, most of the time I have conversations with you know various people thinking of starting businesses, this and that, mainly coders and software engineers. And most of them, the first thing they would say is, you know, first we're going to find a client or a few people who are really interested, uh, or a few accounts. Then we're going to start the business and first make the solution for them, then expand uh, from there. What do you think of that kind of a strategy? It's really difficult to start up a software business if you don't have a portfolio yet. Um, that's basically what your clients are going to be looking for. They're not going to be interested in seeing someone walk in their boardroom and go, right, I'm going to start up a company. I haven't yet. I don't have a history. I can't show you what we've done, but trust me, we're going to be reliable. We're going to be really good. I guarantee we can deliver this product. Um, oftentimes, it's better to just start up walk in and uh, I don't know a better way of putting this, fake it till you make it. Um, most of your work is going to come through recommendation, most of your work is going to come through your portfolio. Um, it's very, very difficult to start up if you're A, not a company yet, B, you don't have a back history, and C, if you haven't really, I suppose, got a future planned yet.